Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're rejoicing, and we are glad in it. I want to give you a moment just to hop on. As we do on Thursdays, I want to take a moment and pray with you. One of the most important things we can do for one another is to pray, and there is very little that we can do until we pray. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that man ought to always pray and never give up. Well, that's an indication to us that circumstances may be trying, circumstances may be hard, uh, circumstances, you know, they, they may be pressing, uh, but you and I are to take those things to God in prayer. We are never to relent, never to give up always to push through, always to depend on God for strength and power. And uh, so I thank God for the strength and the power that comes from his presence. I thank God for the strength and the power that come from spending time with him. And uh, one of the most valuable things that we all get to do together uh, is not just to pray as individuals, but to pray for one another. Uh, in the Old Testament, it was Samuel who said that I would not commit the sin of ceasing to pray for you. Uh, prayer is so powerful uh, and so potent when we do it for one another that it is almost sinful. It's downright sinful when we don't exercise the power of prayer and invoke the presence of God uh, uh, on each other's behalf. And uh, beyond that, uh, James tells us about the potency and the power of prayer when he says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Uh, and so prayer is powerful. We are told that we ought to pray for one another. You know, that's the, that's the deal. Um, as a matter of fact, um, for sickness and for sin, um, the prayer of faith saves the sick and, uh, you are to can, you and I are to confess our faults one to another and pray for one another that we may be healed. Uh, and so prayer is powerful. It's powerful. Um, I'm wondering if I am well connected here. Prayer is powerful. It's powerful. It is powerful uh, what we do for each other. Um, and I want to encourage you today uh, from this singular, singular thought here. Uh, Psalm 23, one of our favorite psalms, one of our favorite psalms. Um, and I'm sure one um, of yours also, because it's been a favorite uh, of the church, uh, the church. And when I say that, I, I mean the church worldwide throughout history. Uh, Psalm 23 has been a staple uh, for the church throughout history. Um, when it says, the Lord is my shepherd, uh, I shall not want and he makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And, and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. What an amazing, amazing psalm. You know, um, the scholars look at that and they said, well, Psalm 23 has two types of God talk, two types of God talk. The first type of God talk is talking about God. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Uh, but then it moves from um, talking about God to talking to God. And so they start saying, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you 
are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. And it makes sense that Psalm 23 would include two types of God talk. It not only makes sense that Psalm 23 would include two types of God talk, it makes sense, it makes sense, brothers and sisters, that Psalm 23 would not only hold two types of God talk, but it's it makes sense when uh, that God talk changes. In the beginning, they're talking about God, but in the valley, they're talking to God. And uh, we are in the valley right now. This is a valley season uh, with so many things happening with pandemics and racial problems and all of the things that are ensuing in our society right now. We are in one of life's valleys. And the good news is um, that just like, just like um, God sends sunshine, uh, God allows it to rain. He allows it to rain also. Life life not only has sunshine, life has some rain. But the good news is uh, that when we get in life's valleys, right, uh, even though we're going through valley moments and valley seasons right now, um, the way to get through it is in Psalm 23. Um, the psalmist starts out by talking about God. Uh, but when he gets in the valley, he starts talking to God. And this is the time where you and I, it's more important now than ever, that we uh, have a close relationship with God. And we're not just in a place or a position where we're talking about God, but we are uh, ourselves talking to God, that we're keeping regular communion and, and constant communication with God. That's the time that we live in. That's the time we live in where we absolutely need to talk to God. Now, that this idea of talking to God, um, it really hints at relationship that it's not enough to know about God or to be able to talk about God. But it's important. It's absolutely important um, that we learn uh, to have a relationship with and to talk to God. Um, my mother's relationship with God, my grandmother's relationship with God, the relationship uh, with God that some of my family members may have had is not sufficient for me. I need to have my own walk, my own relationship. I need to have my own relationship with God. I need to have uh, my own time with God. Uh, I need to be walking with God and be able to say that I know him and I'm walking with him and I'm talking with him. Um, that That is uh, the important thing, brothers and sisters. That's absolutely important that you and I know the Lord for ourselves because valley seasons will happen to all of us. We will all have valley moments and valley seasons. We'll all have seasons where there is going through, where there is suffering, where life seems difficult. We'll all have seasons like that. Um, but here, here is the beauty. Uh, the beauty uh, is in having communion and communication with God and being able to say that I don't just know about God, but I know God. I, I know God and he is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. I like the psalmist because the psalmist, um, he doesn't shy away from the fact that he is not just my shepherd in good times, but he's my shepherd in the valley. Now, notice not just, notice not just his God talk, but notice um, his God sense, okay? In, in the beginning, he senses that God is ahead of him, that God is leading him. When life is good, he senses that God the shepherd is leading him, right? He leads me in the paths of righteousness uh, for his name's sake. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. In the good times, God's up ahead. He's leading me. But in the valley moments, 
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Listen to this now. When life is good, the shepherd is up ahead. That's his sense of God, right? Um, but when life gets tough, the, he says, the psalmist says, the shepherd is with me. The shepherd's with me. He's not ahead of me. He's with me. And I want you to know um, that God gets closer when life gets harder. And so as much suffering and pain as we've experienced, God is within arm's reach. He is within reach. He is close to us in this moment. And he is closer to us in this moment um, than when life is good. He is closer in tragedy, closer in problem, closer in trial, closer in pain. He is closer in these moments. And he is urging you and uh, you and I to draw closer to him in these moments. He's closer to us in these moments. He is closer to us in our pain. He's within arm's reach. He's within arm's reach. And he is urging us to draw close to him in this moment, urging us to reach out to him in this moment, urging us to draw near to him in this moment. That, that my friend, that my friend is the reality. Most people, when life gets hard, they ask the question, where is God? Where is God uh, when there's a pandemic? Where is God in the middle of all these problems? Where is God when people are suffering? Where is God when people have pain? Where, where is God uh, when the Twin Towers fell? Where is God when COVID came? Where is God in the middle of all these terrorist attacks? Where is God? Where is God in the middle of all of this? And the truth is, that's the question. The truth is, God's close. He's close. He is near. He is not a God that stands far away. He is near. He is right here with us. He is right here with us. He's right here with us. He's within arm's reach. And his voice calls out to us that he's so close that if you reach out, if you will reach out to him, if you will draw near to him, he is so close, he will draw near to you. It's never one-sided. It's never one-sided. If you draw near to him, he in turn, will draw near to you. That is the promise. That is the promise, and that is the reality of the place in which we live. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to finish this, this psalm because uh, I think it's important for our prayer time. It's important for the problems that we're currently facing. We're moving through this year, moving, uh, getting ready to move into another year, and and uh, as much as we say we're ready for this year to be over, I seem to remember that same sentiment in 2019, and we had no clue what we were stepping over into. Uh, and so I'm thankful for each day. I'm thankful for each day. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen next year, but I know I have today. I know God has given me today. Give us this day our daily bread. I know God has gifted me with today. So I don't know what tomorrow holds, and I'm not going to pine away for a future that's uncertain. But I'm going to trust in the sovereignty of my God. He's given me today. He's gifted me with today. I'm going to make the most of it. But I want you to know that in the middle of all these things where people are asking, where is God? He is closest when life is hardest. Psalm, 40, uh, Psalm 42, one of my favorite psalms, says that uh, the Lord he, he is a very present help in the time of trouble. He's here. Friends, he's here. Brother, he's here. Sister, he's here. In your home where there are problems, he is there. He is there and he is close. And he is able and he's willing to reach out. Where is God? He's, he's right here. He's right here with us. Right here present with us. He's a very present help, a more present help. He's more present than trouble. He's right here. And so, brothers, sisters, friends, I want you to be encouraged this morning. 
it was a dark world. It was a dark world. A dark world, a dark time. There had been no communication from God for 400 years. It was a dark world in which Jesus was born into. You know what they called him? He was called Emmanuel. God with us. God with us in the darkness. God with us in the pain. The pain of being oppressed by an enemy government. The Roman government over the Jews. An enemy king, Herod, the, a the Edomite over the Jews. Uh, a wicked king. Uh, an evil king. Um, and yet, in the middle of all of that, in the middle of political uncertainty, in the middle of contention and problems, into that world was born the Savior. Into that world was born the one of whom it is said, God is with us. God, folks, God is with us. And this is the season where we celebrate the fact that he's not a God that stands far from us. He's not a God that stands apart from us, not a God that stands away from us. He's a God that is right here with us. He's right there with you. He's right there with you. And his request, his, his, his request, his desire is that you draw near to him in this season. You draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. Father, make your presence known. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life, the gift of health, the gift of strength. Thank you, Father. We are here by your grace alone, by your grace alone, because of your love alone. We are here only because of you. Where would we be without you? What could we do without you? Where could we go without you? Who would we be without you? How far could we go without you? Lord, we don't want to know. We don't want to know where we'd be. We don't want to know. We, we know we'd be lost. We know we'd be hurting. We know we'd be bruised. We know we'd be in pain. Uh, God, we, we know we would be, uh, we, Lord, there'd be no hope for us. All hope would be gone if we didn't have you. Thank you for giving us you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you that right where my brother or sister is, in the middle of their problem, in the middle of their pain, thank you that you are close to them today. You're right there present with them. Thank you for the season of celebrating your presence, your presence that brings peace, your presence that restores joy, your presence that gives hope. Thank you for the season of celebrating, not presence, but presence, your presence. Thank you so much for sending us, giving us you, so that we say that God is with us. Thank you for that. Lord, give grace to my brother and my sister today. Give them grace for every trial. Grace, Lord, for their trouble. Grace for their hardship. Grace for their pain. Grace for their suffering. Grace where they're hurting. Grace where they have a thorn. Grace where they have a hang-up. Grace where they're struggling, grace, where they're trying to cope, grace, where they're grieving, grace, where their body aches, grace, where there are aches in the heart or in the soul. Give them grace today. Your grace is more than enough. Give them grace for relationship problems, grace for child problems, grace for spousal problems, grace for money problems. Release your grace to them today. Give them grace. Your grace is more than enough. And would you not only give them sufficient grace, but thank you for giving them your presence, for proving to them that you're there, that you are present with them. You are a very present help. You're a very present help in the time of trouble. And we thank you, Lord. Show them that you're there. Show them that you're there. Show them that you're there. Make your presence known. Make your presence known in their midst. Make your presence known in their life. Make your presence known where they are. Make your presence known. And I pray a release of grace, a release of favor upon them. I pray healing for those that are sick today. Healing for those that pain is wrecking their body. Healing for those that are troubled in their mind. Healing for those, God, with... Uh, that are troubled in their emotions today. I pray healing for them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I, would you stretch out your hands and heal? Would you give peace to troubled hearts and minds? Not the peace that the world gives. Your peace, give it to us today. The peace that 
passes all understanding. Let it guard their heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Let it guard their thinking and their being. Let them let it guard their thoughts and guard them at the core of who they are. May they not be shaken in a troubled world because they have your peace. And Lord, we lay uh, our affairs at your feet. We lay our sin at your feet. We lay our problems at your feet today in the name of Jesus. Oh God, thank you right now in the name of Jesus for being a present help, a very present help. Thank you for being there now in the name of Jesus. Make your presence known. When my brother or sister shows up for work today, make your presence known. Lord, when they're in the presence of that thing that's problematic, make your presence known. May they have an awareness of your presence in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God, we thank you this morning. Stretch out your hand today, God. Move by your power today, God. Give grace today, God. Send your power. Send your presence. Surround us with your love today, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we worship you this morning. Oh, we thank you this morning. Oh, we give your name glory. We give your name honor. We give your name praise. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. We give your name praise. You are so worthy and wonderful, Lord, and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. Glory 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 and honor is due, Lord. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. We love you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. We love you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. We love you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch those that are in food scarcity today. Touch those that are dealing with food uncertainty today. Touch those, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Touch those, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Touch those, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, who are uncertain about their next meal, who are troubled because of unemployment. Touch today, God, those that are troubled because of financial shortage or financial uncertainty. Touch today, God, in the name of Jesus. Stretch out your hands and touch them. Provide for them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for provisions being sent to them now in the name of Jesus. Release your grace on your people today. We thank you and we praise you. And we receive your grace today in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, folks, for allowing me to pray with you this morning. Thank you for being here. We love you. I'm praying that you have a good day. We're finishing strong now. This is the 12th month. We got to finish strong. We got to push through. We got to push through. We're finishing strong. I love you. I thank God for you. Be encouraged today. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Be encouraged today.